Hello, hi, how are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. So today we're going to be doing a topic that I'm very interested in. Um, this is something I've actually thought about making a video on for a while, but I couldn't really adequately like put into words what I wanted to say. I had this idea a while back for a video titled, I bought AirPods and now I'm no longer relatable. And it was because I bought a pair of AirPods and I feel like there is this big perception on YouTube that when YouTubers start to get successful, they pretty much immediately sell out. <laughs> they immediately only care about money and flexing and all of those things. And so I had this idea and I just couldn't put it into words. And then Haley Fom posted Fam Fom Haley Fom. I don't know how to pronounce her last name, which I feel like I should because I watch her videos. I actually like watched her videos before all this happened. Does this coat look weird here? I would make it look cozy, but it kind of just looks like a rug. I'm gonna take it off. So Hailey Fom came out with a new video and it was a story time, like styled like Tana Mojo-esque story time. And she basically talked about her trip to Europe. In the video, she talked about, this caused a, she, she managed to offend like three different groups of people with this video. If you don't know who Hailey Fom is, she's like an 18 year old YouTuber. She kind of hopped on the like visco trend. I think you could definitely qualify her as a visco girl. And a big thing that she talks about on her channel um, is not only only, she makes like just kind of funny videos like vlogs like very like challenges like stuff like that and she's dating Ryan Tran who I love he has amazing content he does like he used to do more commentary videos and now I think he's switching to more like Mr. Beast style videos and they're cool like I like his content I think he works really hard on his content and I like him um, and they're a couple so they they're like a little YouTube couple so they went to Europe for their one-year anniversary and this is the thing with this video so I think we, I'm, before I even explain the situation, I think when you're talking about privilege or when you're talking about people like acting bratty or acting kind of like un, ungrateful for what they have, there's kind of two sides of the argument where it's like they spent their money, it's their money, they worked hard for it, they should be able to spend it however they want, their problems are valid, even if they might seem like petty or silly to us, like it's not to them. Like that's kind of the one side and everyone's problems are valid, like that's the one side. And then the other side is, um, you know that like the Kardashians meme where it's Courtney's like Can there are people dying because she's like crying about an earring That's the other side of the coin where it's like sometimes rich people problems can somewhat be Funny to laugh at and be like come on like seriously like there's bigger issues You know what I mean? It's hard with the way that the world is set up right now and how our world is kind of mm, on fire, especially the United States, like especially if you live in the United States, you know that the political climate right now is very tense and there's a lot of bad things happening. So I think in that respect, you're kind of like, okay, yeah, you can do whatever you want with your money, like your problems are valid. At the same time, people are literally dying of hunger and, you know, 33 million people are on food stamps because they can't even afford basic human necessities. But like your trip to Italy went bad. Like there's that aspect of it too, where you're just like, come on, like you have to roll your eyes. I think this particular video struck a nerve with a lot of people because because not only was it her being entitled and like rich, rich people probs, not only was it that, she also somehow managed to offend like three different groups of people by with her statements and just like her ignorance. And I just thought that was interesting. So Haley uploaded this video titled, I lost $10,000 and caught a rare disease story time. And basically in the video, I watched it twice because I really didn't want to miss any of the information that she was providing. And I wanted to kind of gain an understanding of what people were talking about. So I watched it and basically her and her boyfriend, Ryan, who I mentioned before, are going on their one year anniversary trip to Italy, which again, in and of itself, that's a huge privilege that they get to do. But again, I mean, they work hard for it. So like, okay, like that in and of itself, I don't find that problematic, whatever. They get to go. So they're going from, Lon they're going from Texas to London and then from London to Italy and then from Italy to Greece. From the get-go, when she was talking about this vacation, it seems very much like she picked her destinations based on Instagram. I 
I've traveled quite a bit in my day and I'm just gonna tell you don't pick your locations based on Instagram I promise you you're gonna be disappointed because there's this thing called Facetune I don't know if you've heard of it and like everything looks prettier on Instagram like don't be where you're gonna go especially in Europe which is so rich and full of culture and just like amazing like don't base it off Instagram F first of all that wasn't even the most offensive part but I was just like as somebody who's like been to Europe I was like there are so many amazing like small little places that you can go and like beautiful amazing towns you can visit that are so full of culture and like life and amazing that you don't see on Instagram so if you're gonna go to Europe and you watch her video don't pick it based on Instagram she started talking about that and then she talked about how they flew into London London was fine uh, her boyfriend had forgotten his camera on the plane their brand new like vlogging camera but she talked about how okay so they tried to find it they couldn't and then the air the airport company called them and they were like oh just come get it when you come back to the airport to leave so they went without preparing adequate time to in advance to like go pick this up like I guess they thought it was gonna be a really simple and easy procedure I don't know about you guys I get to airports like five hours early <laughs> like the most paranoid person but they I guess didn't a lot proper time to go to lost and found and then she was mad and inferred that British people were rude because at the airport they wouldn't let her boyfriend cut the line to the lost and found so he can get his camera that's the first piece of like out of touch entitlement there this is the problem I think people have is just how entitled the whole thing sounded because it's like well my boyfriend had a plane to catch in like 30 minutes and they just like wouldn't let him get up there and just grab his camera real quick and it's like you're not taking into account that everyone in that line is also at an airport and like also probably has a plane to catch like you know what I mean so that was the first kind of red flag then she said she went to Italy Italy was beautiful whatever she went to she went to Santorini Greece and she kind of crapped on Greece um, and I feel like this is the one that people were the most offended by this in her comment about nurses which pissed me off but she went to Santorini and she basically told people not to go to Greece because they have a poor economy because she didn't like plan her trip right and she didn't know anything to do so she thought it was boring I don't know again like just the entitlement of being like don't go to this country like I didn't have a good time and I couldn't find the beaches when it, just a simple google search via me like I found like five beaches in Santorini that are like world famous beaches you know what I mean so it was again just like that's an ignorant thing to say to say not to go to a country because it has a poor economy especially when the main reason that economies can be boost is via tourism is like a kind of ignorant and silly thing to say and again I was just like man what are you doing she went on to talk about the fact that uh, she I guess she like made a lot of mistakes booking the trip which like she's 18 it was probably her first time booking like international trips like that to that scale so it makes sense that she would make a lot of mistakes but she basically talked about how she booked the wrong dates home to get home and she ended up having to pay like three thousand dollars to like six thousand dollars to like get home and you know get her mom home and like get everybody home because she screwed up and like okay that sucks like yes but at the same time again I think people's problem with it was like well it was your like the whole video it was basically like it was her fault that all of these bad things kind of happened on her trip this is only the first part of the video it's kind of her fault that all those bad things happened she didn't plan things right she didn't accurately check the dates that she was booking things she like did everything in a weird way but it sounded like she was blaming other people for those mistakes when in reality like she's the one that screwed that up and so I, it was weird it was a weird video and so then she gets home and I guess she got like really sick and then all of a sudden she had what she thought was like an STD but she she if you don't know on her channel she's very open about the fact that she is waiting till marriage she's very religious and all of those things totally fine no issues like I'm not gonna crap on someone for making life decisions that they feel are best for them do you okay so she said she started having like pains and sores on her like I don't want to get demonetized and uh, she talked about that kind of at length and then this is where I found the most of the story to be the most problematic the trip thing was just like basic YouTube entitlement like thinking you know your life is really hard because your Santorini Beach trip didn't work out the way you wanted to you know what I mean um, that's like basic YouTuber we've seen that type of entitlement from so many different YouTubers this was like actually very disrespectful basically crap talked nurses and was basically just saying like these the nerd like I didn't get to see their actual doctor 
doctors. I had to see the PAs and the PAs don't actually really know what they're doing. And like, I went to this one doctor and she wasn't a real doctor. She was a PA. They were the only one who could get me in. And she pushed to my stomach and she thought I had appendicitis. She didn't even like take the time to get to know me. She went to an urgent care. If you've ever been to an urgent care, when you go to an urgent care, it's because you have something urgently wrong with you that you're like trying to figure out. They don't have time to take your full medical. You're not at a doctor's office. You're at an urgent care. They don't have time to take your full medical history. They have 25 other people with a fever and a stomach pains like in the waiting room that they also have to get to. If you act like this is the thing. It's like anybody else would just know that. Like I go to an urgent care if I like absolutely just need like antibiotics for something. I don't go because I think they're going to be thorough and know exactly what's wrong with me. I go if I need like imme immediate care so I can then wait to go see my real doctor who knows my medical history and knows a lot about me. So then the doctor thought she had appendicitis and she was saying that like if it was a real doctor they would have known that it wasn't that. It was a physician's assistant. Which physician's assistants are like the only reason that the medical system in America works and the only reason people are able to be seen you know in a quick and timely manner at doctor's offices but like go off I guess. I don't know. So then when she had to go to the gynecologist she said again she wasn't able to see the actual uh, gynecologist. She had to see the physician's assistants and they had no idea what it was and just saying like because they weren't real doctors they that's why they didn't know. Not that she has some rare crazy disease which is what she ended up having was some rare crazy disease and she goes and finally I got to go and see the real doctor and the real doctor like knew what was wrong with me whatever. Like it was just so condescending the profession of nursing physicians assistants. Those people still have to go to school for a long time and go through a rigorous process to get that training. Those people still those without those people the doctors wouldn't be able to see you for like 10 months. Like those people work their butts off so that way you can get healthier. Like it just I I don't know that was like next level elitism to me. Like the fact that she was like well I didn't get to see the real doctor. Nobody though you know the last time I saw my real doctor at my primary cares office it's been like I don't think I've ever even met the guy. I always see the physician's assistants always because they're incredibly helpful incredibly knowledgeable and incredibly competent at what they do. To insinuate that they are not as competent as like a doctor would be it's just ridiculous. It's so annoying okay. To look down on that profession is incredibly annoying and to claim that they aren't good enough to like look at you and figure out what's wrong super annoying okay. She also mentioned in this video that she talked about and this I feel like is what really made people mad was she talked about how she was angry at God because God gave her this issue and she's just trying to be pure and wait till marriage and she doesn't understand why her, the one who's so pure and waiting for marriage, had to go through something like this basically when other girls don't do that. So I think in her mind, because she's waiting till marriage, she doesn't deserve to have things go wrong with her vagina. <laughs> I think the biggest, that's the whole situation with Haley Fong. And that's the story. I think the big, I just saved you the 35 minute story time. Like that was the story. I think the biggest reason that I personally was like, wow, the entitlement jumped out. Like I think the biggest reason why I personally thought that was like not only because of everything I just said, but it kind of made me think of like YouTube as a bigger space and how a lot of the creators on the platform right now are young. Haley is like 18 years old. Like she's a young girl. She's, I think she's turning 19 in like a couple months. Haley's young, okay? And all of these young kids have been able to become millionaires without actually doing an actual ton of work. And I know that people who do YouTube might be offended because YouTube, and I do YouTube a lot. I post a lot of videos. I work really hard on my content. But at the end of the day, I have worked real, real jobs. Like I've worked like the nine to fives. Like I've worked daycare with like terrible, terrible shifts. I've had kids literally poop on me and get paid $9 an hour to do that. And that job is a billion times harder harder than what this is. I can safely tell you that. A lot of these kids though, I don't think they like have that real life experience or if they did, they didn't do it for long enough to make an impact. Like I don't think any of these kids work in like fast food and had to like do that job. So now they're just millionaires doing this job that's incredibly easy and living lives that, you know, most Americans will never get to live. Most of her subscribers that are watching her complain about her Italy trip will never get to go to Italy. And that's not her fault. None of this is the fault of
of Haley Fum. Like the hunger crisis we have in our country, that's not her problem. The extreme poverty we have in our country, like that's not her problem. And she can't solve those things. But I do think it would be beneficial for these YouTubers to kind of learn about, and I'm not, again, this is such a fine line because it's like, it's your money, do what you want with it. I own expensive makeup, I own expensive bags. Like I totally get that my makeup collection is excessive and crazy and I spend a ton of money on this. And it's like my money and I'm, that's always my argument is like people will criticize me for it and I'm like, well, it's my money. Like I can spend it how I wanna spend it. And I think there's one thing in spending your money how you wanna spend it. And I think it's another thing to act entitled to getting your dream Instagram vacation, entitled to cutting lines at airports because your flight leaves in 30 minutes and you're better, entitled to a real doctor because you couldn't possibly be with a physician's assistant who could know what they're doing, entitled to not getting vaginal diseases because you're waiting till mid, like what? Like I think that's the problem. And Haley Fahm is just kind of a perfect example in this moment, but we see this with so many influencers. They complain about their lives and at a certain point, I had this issue, I had the same issue with people who went to Coachella. I had the same problem with people who went to Coachella and then just went for free, got free artist pass, which are like, you can't even just buy those, like free artist passes. I got free beautiful Airbnbs with pools, were styled for free, all their drinks were, like everything was free and they still found reasons to complain. Like that's what I have, a, to their millions of followers, who those millions of followers are the only reason that they're there in the first place. I feel like because these people are so young, because they are so rich, because that's what it comes down to in my opinion, I think the biggest reason that YouTubers gain a sense of entitlement is because of money. They have so much money, they don't even know what to do with it. That's why they're all buying like Gucci and Supreme. Cause like what else are you gonna do with that type of money at 18 when you're in zero debt? Like what else are you supposed to do? Like you didn't go to college, you didn't acquire student debt, like you're, you're too young to even get a credit card, most of them, or have had a credit card for a long time. So you don't have any debt there. Like what else are you supposed to do with that type of money? I definitely think that money is a huge part of this. And I think it's sad when you look through comment sections of YouTubers who have blown up really quickly and gained a lot of money really quickly because their comment section is all comments of like, you've changed, you know? And I, I think it's possible to be a successful YouTuber and not change. We've seen it with different, Jenna Marbles, I mean, Simply Neological, like all of these YouTubers, there are YouTubers that have been able to do it and not be entitled, not think they're better than anyone because they have money. But if you'll know Notice, a lot of those people are older. They've had life experience. I think it's almost, it's kind of weird because I'm like, I expect more from these kids and I expect more from them and I want them to be better. But at the same time, I'm like, man, if I was a millionaire at 18, what, what, what kind of crazy crap would I be doing? Because I guarantee you, it'd probably be similar to them. It's kind of a problem that doesn't have a solution necessarily because it's like, you can only tell them, they can only learn these things through life experience experiences. I hope that after, you know, the backlash she got from this video, Haley Fom will take this as a learning experience, but like Tana Mojo did not. <laughs> you know, I feel like she's the prime example of like super entitled, especially after you watch her reality show. I wouldn't even watch a reality show. I would watch Luke Alexander's um, reaction to her reality show because I think it's great. But especially when you watch that show, you see exactly who she is as a person when she doesn't think she's being watched. And it's just sad. Like it's sad to see. Yeah, there's no real, I normally I like to end my videos with like a solution to be like let's all do this there's no I'm not gonna be like cancel Haley Fomp because she said some ignorant stuff that was like pretty in pretty poor taste and pretty entitled I'm not gonna do that because I don't think I don't think that's the case but I do hope that when even if it's your fave that when you see your faves doing something like that acting very entitled you know letting everything get to their head for their own benefit like as a subscriber in a nice way <laughs> don't just freaking attack people but in a nice way just say like oh my god like i saw comments on her video that were just genuine they were like i like you but this video is not it like this video is you and they listed all of the reasons why and i think that's the best thing that fans can do for their faves because even if they don't listen even if they're still who they are you know what i mean at least we are trying to make it a more positive space. At least we are trying to not let 18 year olds turn into a bunch of little 
jerks. Oh, uh, with their little supreme bags and like Gucci slides. It's just a lot. This video turned into something very weird and I'm, I'm, I, I don't want me in this to be like hate towards Hailey Fahm because at the end of the day, like I said, I think she's a young kid who said some ignorant stuff, who was pretty entitled and who's getting very caught up in money and YouTube. Like, you know what I mean? But I do think her actions deserve being called out and being like, hey, it's not okay. <laughs> and explaining why I don't think it's okay. I hope you guys like this video. If you did, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do new Either. Honestly, just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media, and everything I am wearing on my face will be linked down below, along with a link to register to vote. That's right. You can go register to vote right now in the link in my description, and you can have a voice in your local state and federal elections, which is like awesome. Um, <laughs> And if that link does not apply to you and you do not live in the US, make sure that you are just staying informed on what's going on in your country. Use your voice in a positive way. That's really all the world needs right now. Um, so yeah, I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.